This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning. Good morning. We are so grateful and honored to be present at the Episcopal Church in Colorado's 130th annual convention here in Grand Junction, Colorado. We give God thanks for this blessing. We extend our deepest gratitude to Bishop Robert J. O'Neill, to the annual convention planning committee, the canon to the ordinary for the Episcopal Church of Colorado and our dear friend Ruth Woodliffe Stanley. Grateful for our wonderful family members who are here to support us and our deepest gratitude to all of you for being here on this blessed morning. Let us pray. God, we love you and we, we magnify you. We thank you for your son, Jesus the Christ, and we thank you for all people everywhere. Thank you for your redeeming grace. Thank you for your presence in this place. And we pray, oh God, that you be with your black women prophets right now. Speak to us. And through us, be with us in proclamation as you were with us in preparation. Speak to the hearts of all of us in this place so that we will press forward in the fight for liberation and healing with our entire selves, filled with love, fully awake, and emboldened in our faith in you, almighty God. This we pray in the name of Jesus. And the people of God say amen. 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 I am the Reverend Tawana Davis. And I am the Reverend Dr. Don Riley Duvall. And, and we, we are the co-founders of Soul to Soul. Soul to Soul is a black woman-led, faith-based, racial justice nonprofit that focuses on black healing and black liberation. Soul to Soul offers five programs. Black Healing Power Programming provides healing opportunities in a diverse, inclusive, sacred space for black people. Through our Soulful Journey Program, Soul to Soul facilitators guide predominantly white congregations and social justice organizations through four bi-weekly intensive sessions that center black people and experiences. Another Soul to Soul program is Audra Song which is offered in the spirit of our beloved Audre Lord, in her quote that says, caring for myself is not self-indulgent. She says it is self-preservation, and that is an act of political warfare. Indeed, Audre Song works to promote healing, self-care, and sisterly support among black women activists in the Denver metro area. Partnering with the Interfaith Alliance of Colorado, Soul to Soul also hosts Facing Racism cohorts of 20 white people from various religious traditions in centering black people, experiences, and black liberation. And through our Truth and Conciliation programming, Soul to Soul guides small or large groups in congregations or organizations in sessions that work toward increased understanding and healthy relationships when tensions or conflicts arise re relating to race, ethnicity, power, privilege, and oppression. Now, since Soul to Soul centers black healing and black liberation in our programming, the question we are asked all of the time, since there are so many historically oppressed populations, why does Soul to Soul center black people? And I'm glad you asked. <laughs> to be clear, Soul to Soul does not center black people or blackness solely because Reverend Dawn and I are black. Soul to Soul is doing countercultural work of centering black people and experiences because the savage oppression of black people is at the heart of the United States of America's foundation and is still thriving today. Soul to Soul centers black people because during the past century, members of dominant culture have expressed compassion, repentance, and or have engaged in reparation efforts to various historically oppressed populations, but this is not necessarily true concerning black people. And the main reason 
Soul to Soul Center's Black Healing and Black Liberation is, since anti-blackness is inextricably bound to every form of injustice, for example, concerning gender and sexuality, labor, religion, class, immigration, refugees, black liberation therefore moves us towards liberation of all people, liberation of all people, liberation of all people. Determination. determination for personal and collective liberation leads us to this morning's scripture found in Matthew chapter 4 verses 1 through 11. And it reads, then Jesus was led up by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted for 40 days and 40 nights and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came to him and said, if you are the son of God, Command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, it is written, one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him again, it is written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all of the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to him, all these I will give to you if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, away with you, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him, and suddenly angels came and waited on him. This morning, we invite you to reflect with us on the theme, welcome to the wilderness. We stand before you in the midst of these trying times. Nationally, health care is on the line. Trying times. LGBTQIA beloveds, especially transgender loved ones, are being shamed and excluded by some U.S. politicians, including the U.S. president. Trying times. There is still a battle concerning banning refugees from predominantly black Muslim countries. Trying times. Our undocumented beloveds are being deported these trying times. Women's rights and protections are being stripped away. Trying times. Unknowns concerning children's education. Trying times. Gentrification is the new colonialism in historically black communities nationwide. Trying times. Houselessness is on the rise as home prices and rents soar while wages stagnate. And of course, of course, of course, there are personal trials. The loss of sweet loved ones. The ending of marriages and relationships and friendships. The loss of a job. Underemployment. The loss of confidence. Loss of home. Domestic violence in the home. The loss of physical and or mental health. And just as these trials in some way affect us all, the killing of black people affect us all. So much is happening. So much is happening as residents in the U.S. struggle to stay alive post hurricanes, post mass murders, and post it during wildfires. So much is happening on the U.S. president's Twitter feed. So much is happening to take a knee or not to take a knee. That is the question indeed. So much is happening that you may not hear about the brutalization and killings of black people as frequently as we have in years past, but it is still, it is still happening. Just ask the parents of 15-year-old freshman Jordan Edwards, who was killed by a Dallas police officer when the officer opened fire on a car full of teens as they were leaving a party on April 29th, 2017. On June 10th, a group of children in Jackson, Mississippi found Jeremy Jerome's head on a neighbor's porch and badly burned body about a mile away a few hours later. 
On June 18th, police officers shot Charlena Lyles, who was pregnant, and her small children standing nearby witnessed the shooting. Yes, truly, we are in the wilderness. And Reverend Tawana and I could come up in here and be silent about black truth could come into this room that is almost filled with white people and say things to make you feel comfortable, make you feel good, do a little patty cake and be up out of here. <laughs> but as our ancestors spoke through last night's spiritual, before I'll be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave. <laughs> yes, yes. And Audre Lorde implores us, speak for those women who do not speak for those who do not have a voice because we are taught to respect fear more than ourselves. We've been taught that silence would save us, but it won't and it hasn't. So as black women in the wilderness, let us provide a snapshot for you of our wilderness experience. A black woman. Mother, grandmother, daughter, black woman. Sister. Friend, prophet, doctor, black woman. Student, activist, lover, Imago Day. As a black woman in this history and the making Black Lives Matter moment, religion, rituals, ancestors knowing are saving me, saving us. In the midst of injustice, in the midst of inequity are keeping me, keeping us. In joy and triumph, in love and life, rituals, religion, Ancestors knowing are holding us in the midst of our holler. Yes, I want to holler. want to scream and holler with love and joy when I see my son and daughter who are 12 and 10, see them laughing and running with their hands in the air, just beautiful and big and black and shiny and free. I want to holler. Throw up both my hands in honor of Michael Brown, in praise for my 22-year-old son for still being alive, living a life that Michael Brown and others were not afforded, in praise for God's protection of my 31-year-old daughter who is similar in age to the late Sandra Bland, and in intercessory prayer for my eight-year-old grandson praying for his protection from the racist ills of this world. And I want to holler just ecstatic and full when I complete a task with flash and flare after folk told me to just stop, try business as usual, or recommended that I seek assistance from brother so-and-so. I want to holler. <laughs> I want to holler, love me as I love you. See me as I see you, dignity works both ways, and I am somebody. And there are some times and some things, some places and some spaces, some people and some powers that make me want to holla and throw up both my hands when people assume that because of my black skin, I am expecting a handout. I am, but they assume that because I am a black woman, I need their pity or I need their platitude. What we need is opportunity. Yeah, yeah. Opportunity to live and not die. Live life more abundantly. Yes. Live with human rights and dignity. Live unafraid for our black lives. Live unafraid for our black children and our grandchildren. Yes. What we need is to live and flourish and prosper. After all, it's what we're promised in the Declaration of Independence, which declares, We hold these truths to be sacred and undeniable, that all men and women are created equal and independent, that from the equal creation they derive rights, inerrant and inalienable, among which are the preservation of life and liberty and the pursuit of happiness. So today and every day, until our lives and liberties are protected. For our children, our future, our faith, for God, we, we must, must holla. Yes, welcome to the wilderness, a wilderness that black folks have experienced for centuries. 
and it is wild and incredible and full of awesome unknowns here. In the wilderness, we can be introspective and vulnerable and await something bigger than us here. And in the wilderness, we decide who we will be no matter what and decide who we will never be regardless of the shiny enticement. And thanks be to God, Jesus is here in the wilderness with us. Jesus in the wilderness like so many others before him. I mean, for 40 years, the Israelites wander in the wilderness between enslavement in Egypt and the promised land in, in the wilderness. Miriam encourages the women to, in, on their mission to fulfill their survival in the midst of hardship and pain. In the wilderness. Moses teaches the Torah to provide leadership. In the wilderness. Ruth and Naomi develop a more purposeful spiritual life. In the wilderness. Ezekiel asks the tough question. Question, will, will these dry bones live? In the wilderness, David hides from Saul in the shadows of God's wing. In the wilderness, Job was tested and tested and tested some more. Into the forest we all must go to lose our minds and find our souls. So it is no surprise that we find Jesus here in the wilderness. And this is Jesus' moment, vulnerable and divine, tapping into his humanity. Yes, we find Jesus in the wilderness with thirst and hunger filling his throat. According to commentary, the trial in the wilderness is really a challenge to Jesus' status as the son of God. The devil, literally the adversary, challenges Jesus around three areas, food, protection, and power. Jesus is aware of this potential enslavement by evil and is living out the example of how to respond in the wilderness. And how does Jesus respond? Jesus conquers temptation and evil in the wilderness through resistance. Resistance. Resisting the temptation to value the material over the spiritual scripture says humans shall not live by bread alone. Resistance. Resisting death, refusing to give his body, his life to empire. If you are the son of God, throw yourself down. Resistance. Resisting the greedy urge of monopolistic ownership. Scripture tells us he showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And he said to him, all these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. In the wilderness, rather than resist, there is temptation to take shortcuts, to avoid the struggle. The challenge today is to face evil head on. Listen more to love than fear. Remember that we are warriors of love and not slaves to empire. So with all that's going on, Nationwide and globally, undoubtedly, there are people here today who are willing and ready to risk everything to protect the dignity of all people. Amen? Amen. 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 Willing and ready to protect the lives, the loves, and legacies of all people. Willing and ready to rise up, to rise up, to rise up and resist to protect our collective fit future. Yes, heeding God's call to progress, heeding God's call to protect, heeding God's call to honor our dignity is how we will make it through the wilderness. And that's good news. Amen? Amen. <laughs> and more good news is the spirit of the Most High is right here with us in the wilderness. Yes, you might feel alone sometime. Yes, God never leaves us nor forsakes us. Yes, yes, God is with us and never abandons us. Yes, God is in us, with us, and among us. In 2 Corinthians 4 and 8, Paul says, We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down but not destroyed. Welcome to the wilderness. God is renewing our strength so we shall run and not get weary. We shall walk 
and not fate. Welcome to the wilderness. Where we learn more about God's calling on our lives for such a time as this. Welcome to the wilderness. Where we learn more about who God is and how to anticipate God's miracles. Welcome to the wilderness. Where we transition from a life of selfish wandering to a life of fullness and fellowship and freedom. Welcome to the wilderness. Yes, it may look like we're fighting a losing battle. Yes, there may be worry, pain, and tears, but we got to stand on the promises yes. of God. We can't back down. We can't tap out. We can't shut up. We can't give up. We've got to learn to lean on our everlasting God, stand on the prayers of our ancestors. We must arise. We must arise. We must arise, for we are a resurrection people. Welcome to the wilderness. Yes, we rise up. Because in the words of Asada Shakur, it is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to win. It is our duty to win. We must love and support one another. We must love and support one another. We have nothing to lose but our chains. We have nothing to lose but our chains. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the wilderness. wilderness. 